Let's do a simple select from our location table. And notice we get a table-like result set, known as a tabular result or result set. Looks like we have four fields and five records. Let's change this query so we only get the location ID and the city. Let's run it again. Even though we're not looking at every field in our table, this is still known as a tabular result. Now, what if we wanted this exact same data, but not formatted as a table, but formatted as an XML stream? You can put the for XML, and then that's not enough because you have to specify which type of XML. And the easiest one to start off is one called raw. Let's run that. And we get the same results, although it's a little hard to see. But notice this is a hyperlink. So you can click on this link, and it shows your results. Each row is listed as a tag called row. And all of the data is listed as attributes inside that row. Row might not be the best name for each row. So we have an option of putting a parenthesis after the word raw. And why don't we call this row location? That's a little more descriptive. Let's go ahead and run this. Basically the same results, except we're taking control of the name of our tag. All right, let's close this. Now, let's go ahead and name each row after the table. The table is called location, so let's just take off the word row and say location. Run this. And notice again, we have chosen our destiny of what we want each tag that contains the row data to be called. Now, notice this underline here. It says this XML document contains multiple root level nodes. Notice I have five top level nodes. There's no real root. XML would really like a root to be here and then an ending root down here. And that should pretty much make the errors go away. But the raw does not create a root by default. Knowing that's a popular feature, here's what you can do. Put a comma and then the word root. Let's go ahead and run this. There we go. Instead of an XML fragment, we have an entire complete XML stream. Does the root of the XML have to be called ROOT? In other words, do you have to call the root root? Or maybe we're going to name the root after our company. Let's name it JProco. So we'll put a set of parentheses after the root keyword and in single quotes put JProco. Run it. And look, our root is there and it's called JProco. Our ending tag is also called JProco. Now notice the data is attributes inside of the tag. Couldn't we make all of that data its own sub-element of the top element location? We can. There is an option for that. Put a comma and then the word elements. Go ahead and run this and examine what your results look like. Here is our first location record, which has two child tags. The location ID tag has a value of 1, and the city tag has a value of Seattle. Here is the next record, which is another location record and it's location ID 2, and it's Boston, and so forth. Let's try that again with the employee table. Let's take a quick look. Now, because of the reset script of book 5, we're down to 13 employees, and it looks like we have 7 fields. Well, let's itemize the fields, so we just get first name, last name, and location ID. Let's run that. Still 13 records, this time only three fields. Okay, now what we're going to do is turn it into an XML stream. Let's say for XML raw. Let's click on the hyperlink. Okay, every row is called row, it's not called employee, and we'll live with that. But man, we really need a root for this, don't we? So let's do that. We'll put comma root and run it. Okay, that looks pretty cool. We've got some well-formed XML. Let's close out of there. And what we want to do is we want to put the data in elements. 
Go ahead and run this. Excellent. Here's first name, last name, location ID, first name, last name, and we can see every employee has three sub-elements under the top element row, except for John Marshbank. He's only got two elements. Now what if your process that's consuming XML is going to demand that all rows have three elements? Why doesn't John Marshbank have a location ID element? Well, if we were to just select the query, you would notice John Marshbank doesn't have a location ID. But we want the tag there, just specify a null. Well, you can force tags to be present even if they're null if you specify the XSI nil option for your elements. Let's run that. And let's scroll down and see what John Marshbank looks like. There we go. You see his location ID attribute, and it says that it is null. Time for lab 1.2, skill check 1. Create an XML stream using the raw option to get the class ID and class name fields from the management training table. Each top level element should be named after the table. When you're done, your screen should resemble the figure you see here. Skill check 2. Create an XML stream using the raw option to get the grant name and amount fields from the grant table. Make sure you have a root element named root and each top level element should be named after the table. All the data should be in attributes inside the top level element. When you're done, your screen should resemble the figure you see here. Skill check 3. Create an XML stream using the raw option to get all fields from the contractor table. Make sure you have a root element named root, and each top level element should be named after the table. The data should be contained in sub-elements of the top element. When you're done, your screen should resemble the figure you see here. Skill check 4. Create an XML stream using the raw option to get all fields from the pay rates table. Make sure you have a root element named root, and each top level element should be named capital P, capital R. The data should be contained in sub-elements of the top element. Elements must be present even if their value is null. When you're done, your screen should resemble the figure you see here.